My name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics where we grow cool plants. Today we're going to be doing part one of three in regards to taking these fig tree cuttings that are in this package. I have not opened it yet and it was a gift um, from Richard Bertram um, who saw one of our YouTube videos and he knows um, how passionate I am about fruit trees and specifically I've got behind me a fig tree um, where we did a video called OMG why cut the giving fig tree and it was once a 30 20 to 30 foot tall um, fig tree and as you can see behind me I'll stand up real quick so you can see this but the trees come back quite a bit since we pruned it about four months ago and now we've got four branches in here and what I have in front of it are all of these other varieties of figs that I'm going to be using to ultimately graft onto it and I'll talk more about the importance of grafting in future videos um, I know one of your questions will be like why don't you just plant five different trees one of them being is space I don't have room for five fig trees and nor do I want five fig trees worth of space being taken away from all these other fruit trees that I'm enjoying in the garden as well hence the importance of grafting but again I'll do an entirely different grafting video come later winter and spring when we'll be doing that and I'll talk about the importance of that but what I have here if you want to zoom in so I can share all of these names with you um, so far we have a Kadota fig which will be um, which will be one of the tree um, figs that we're considering it's a green variety we've got the mission black fig and here's what that fruit looks like over here we've also got the brown turkey as you can see and the last that I've got is the Olympian fig and here's that it's considered a, one of the more cold hardy varieties so I've got my candle here for a couple of purposes one being we're here at the end of November it's starting to get cooler here in Los Angeles California our daytime highs are in the 60s and our nighttime lows are now in the 40s all week so this green fig behind me are pretty soon gonna turn from green to yellow and eventually drop their leaves and it'll remain dormant until the later winter and early spring when it'll come back with leaves as well as the first um, brebra crop of figs um, which is the first crop and then the main crop will follow later on um, in spring for what we'll enjoy in the summer so one purpose of our candle here is warmth the most important is going to be we're going to use it to seal the tips of the figs if they haven't been sealed already so let's take a look what we got here So I've got three packages. They're all individually labeled. So this one here says, um, we've got the Petit Negri fig. So that's one. The second one here that we've got labeled is the Isha fig green, because I know it can also, um, the Isha can also be a black variety as well. And we've also got the Chicago hardy variety as well. And Let's take a look at what these look like once we open them up. So here we've got three cuttings of the Chicago Hardy Fig. They've all been pruned nicely at an angle, which is the recommended way to um, prune them. And you can see the very soft pith, which is identified by that white center and that's the reason for capping it is that center will typically collapse as the plant dries out and that's the reason that I've got my candle wax over here so I'm just gonna um, dip my finger into the wax and just try to seal these ends to one prevent any dehydration um, coming out but as well as keeping any um, any risk of bacteria and viruses and any um, disease from happening on these on, on these ends. So I've just sealed the top because I like the way the top is. I'm just going to check the bottom right now, and I like the way the bottom was pruned as well. So I'm just going to um, seal that as well. And what I'm what I was looking for is just checking to see that wherever the so what I was checking for is to see wherever the nodes are, and the nodes are wherever there was once a leaf, as indicated by this leaf scar right here. There's now a bud which could form the future branch or fruit so this here is one node and you can just count the nodes like a ladder and these are all the rings going all the way up to the top so there's a node 
at the top and it was pruned just a quarter of an inch above it. And this here will obviously form the future branch. Luckily, we've got a little piece and that's not necessary with all of them. As you can see over here, the future branch on this one is gonna be right here on this side. And you can see the way it was pruned again properly at an angle, the larger surface is on the side where the node is and where the um, butt is. And on the opposite side, it's a little bit closer to the node. So when you cut at an angle, you're gonna cut it at an angle where it's greater on the bud side and a little bit narrower or closer on the side furthest away from the bud. So let's seal this tip as well. And we'll seal the bottom. And that's it. So we've got now these two, and now let me just prepare the third. And I'm actually gonna correct this one. So this one here, again, a nice, um, prune job near the top. We're just gonna seal that again with the wax. And then when we get to the bottom, you can see that there's a little bit too much distance to my liking. I like to get it closer to about a quarter of an inch away from the bud, and as you can see, this is turning into a branch, but we're hoping that these lenticles, which are the breathing holes around the nodes, will ultimately form into roots. And what I'm gonna do is just take my pruners over here and cut it again at an angle, a little bit closer to the node and we're just gonna go with our wax here and seal that as well. And that'll conclude this step and how the wax is gonna be used. I'm now gonna continue this with the rest of those as well. Um, but what we're gonna do here is, I've already got my bag prepared. And since this here is the Chicago Hardy, I already indicated that the Chicago Hardy was gonna be wrapped in the pink tie. So I've actually got three different to do is just bundle these together as I want to make sure that I can identify them as they mature and if any of these turn into gifts I want to make sure that I'm giving away the right variety of fig um, so we're just gonna bundle those together I'm gonna to try to make sure all the tops are near the top and the bottoms are near the bottom and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna dip it here in a rooting hormone and I've got this rooting hormone made by Schultz. There's a lot of companies that make it, and its only active ingredient is 0.1%, but 99% of it is other inert ingredients. But the other parts that are inert are also supposed to be antifungal and antibacterial. Um, the goal is that while we're putting this in storage in a place where it's gonna root, we wanna make sure that, um, we wanna make sure that it doesn't rot as well. So these, tips are now covered and again one to promote root but also to prevent fungus and what we're gonna do next is put it in our new Ziploc bag and again we've identified what it is and what I've got here on this side and I've got the bag here to show you what, what's here I use um, some sphagnum moss and all I did was put it in a tray over here put some water and I had it soak just before the video and what we're gonna do now is is we're just gonna take a handful of this moss and you're just gonna want to squeeze as much water as you can out of it whatever it's holding on to is all the moisture that these plants need and I'm basically gonna create a base within the bag and this here will be pretty much like the bed that we're gonna lay these three fig cuttings on top of. So that'll now go into the bag and rest right there on a bed of moss. What we'll do next is take another handful of moss, again, squeeze as much of the moisture out of it, allow it to you know still remain wet, and we're just going to make another layer of moss on top of that. So that's now all been covered and that'll now form the bed for the next layer of figs.
So here I am with the last one, the Petite Negri Fig variety. I'm just coating those ends again with some wax. Wanted to make sure that we've got it sealed so that there's no entryways for bacteria and viruses to enter. And now, I wanted to share this one other tip with you. If we take a look at the branches, how do we know which way is up and which way is down? Um, it's good to know, and you saw that when I dipped in the rooting hormone, I was trying to make sure that the lower part or where I'd want the roots to form are in the rooting hormone, and the other parts will hopefully ultimately develop into the branches. So when I'm looking at it, I want to help you identify um, which way is up and which way is down when you get these cuttings that appear to go any which way. When you take a look again at the um, nodes on the stems, you'll notice that the bud, which is identified right here, is above the node. And if the bud is above the node, then that way is pointed up. And if there, this were upside down, you'll notice that the bud is now below the node, and this would be upside down. You'd want to make sure that the buds are facing upwards. And this is the direction of the plant and the direction that it would prefer to be. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our cuttings. Again, I got them right side up. It doesn't matter, no, but we're going to do it the right way. And just dip it here. And again, I've already got the bedding ready. We're just going to set that on top. This is now the third layer. And we're now just going to cover it with some more moss here. So we're just going to squeeze that out and cover them all up like so. That's it, and now we can just seal that. So now we're just gonna seal it, and we're gonna put this now in a window inside our home where the temperatures are warmer. We're gonna make sure that it gets morning sun and morning sun only. We don't wanna keep this in direct sunlight for the whole day, um, as it'll just be, maybe, the heat may be just too intense on the plant. Um, and the goal is to just have this process um, and the plant grow steadily over the winter the goal is within four to six weeks, we should notice some roots um, growing through the moss. And then we're gonna, for our part two, transplant them into some small cups where it'll continue to get developed. And then our part three will be putting them into um, some pots or we can even put them in the ground um, for part three of this video in regards to um, what we're gonna do with the cuttings. Let me share one more um, idea with you in regards to the plants that I've got behind me. You may notice that I've got these two cans um, of the Ivy Organics. Um, this one here, um, is our original label. It says Ivy Organic. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint. Just add water where it's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. It's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And um, on the lid here, it says it's ideal for new plantings, transplants, save injured and damaged trees, prune and expose surfaces. And um, our newest label now, um, which will be going... Um, onto the store shelves sometime probably late winter early spring um, it now also references the fact that it's registered material for um, use in organic agriculture um, and additionally when it comes to the uses both of them um, give instructions on how it can be brushed onto the plant as well as as a foliar spray but now it has the added um, instructions on how to use as a tree paste and just to let you know that if you've got this product at home um, all you need to do is add a quarter cup of water or um, two ounces of water to the entire can, and it'll make a paste. Um, it's gonna be a lot less um, material, but you'll actually end up with a product that is um, that can be used as a paste. And it's also very important with your fig tree, and I'll share with you why and how if you wanna take a look here behind me. So what we've done over here, if you take a look, at the very top, we use this as a tree paste, and I'll put the video link down below where you can see um, how we sealed the top and you can see the very center of the fig has a hollow pith and um, that's a wonderful entryway for ants as well as other pests to enter and start hollowing out the center or what I like to call the heart of the tree but there's another point that I'm actually saving this for a future video to share with you you can see that this here is exactly what I'm talking about that we have not covered yet we did paint it over but we didn't use it as a paste and so the paint just keeps on collapsing back into the tree um, you know there's no insects right now going into it but it's a good idea to keep any holes and entryways in of your tree um, coated. And I'll do a separate video to um, discuss the importance of being able to use your product as a paste as well.
let's go inside and, um, and let's position that bag in a place where it'll continue to grow over the next four to six weeks. So here we are now at a window where it receives morning light. The sun rises here in the east. It gets just um, one and no more than two hours of sunlight for the day. You don't want to leave this again in the sun all day long as it'll overheat and that's not ideal and especially being it's in a closed um, sealed bag like, like this. One hour, two hours of light per day. It'll receive what it needs. Within the next four to six weeks, we're gonna open up and I'll share with you the results of what we're gonna have here. And these will be just some of the varieties of figs we're gonna to get to select from when we go to graph that fig that's in the corner with the um, multi-branch trunk that we'll get to enjoy hopefully plenty of different fig varieties in as early as um, just the next growing season. We're talking about in less than a year, we're gonna enjoy a variety of different figs with this method. So be sure to um, stay tuned and enjoy that. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again, Richard, for those cuttings and happy gardening. Mm -hmm.